Hi guys! Most likely, if you clicked on this video, you want to master the perfectly dipped caramel apple, so no matter what your experience level, this soft and delicious caramel is only two ingredients, easy to make and no fail, which means you don't have to worry about anything going wrong. And the best part, it's something that you may already have in your pantry. This recipe is inspired by my abuelita and one of her favorite caramels she always has around the house. Si, si, yo tengo. Dulce de leche. I'm going to be dipping some apples. Do you think that's a good idea? Muy buena idea. Today we are learning much more than the recipe, from dressing them up with your favorite crunchy toppings to a smooth coating of chocolate, to style your apples anywhere from fun to elegance. Either way, they're fabulous, so to achieve some awesome apples, be sure to keep on watching! When dipping your apples in caramel, you need a reliable, no-fail recipe that you can easily make. So I'm going to be comparing two products that can be found at many stores. One of the most common is the Kraft Caramel Bits. However, I don't recommend them for your no-fail caramel and here's why. A huge con with the Kraft is that you need to remove all the wax in order for the caramel to stick to the skin. By submerging them in a hot water bath combined with white vinegar, after turning your apples around for 10 seconds, the skin will be more dull and have less of a shine to it from removing the wax. But there's a catch, even if you think you clean the apples squeaky clean, there's no way of knowing exactly what's left on there, that is, until you actually dip them. This apple was dipped in a recipe made of the craft with some creamer, and it has a gorgeous coat of caramel, looks are deceiving in the beginning. Then after a few hours later, it gradually slides off the apples, leaving a thin coat of caramel behind. This is from the residual wax, and as you can see, this method is not 100% reliable every time. So let's start over and grab some fresh apples to turn this fail into a success. The quick fix is using La Lechera Dulce de Leche. The best part is you can skip the whole water bath cleaning process altogether since there is no need to remove the wax, just a simple rinse and dry. The reason why is the Dulce de Leche is a softer, thicker caramel so it does not slip off the apple and clings nicely without going anywhere which is a huge plus Dulce de Leche for the win. And leave a comment below if you think this method sounds more convenient for you. Now that the apples are rinsed off, give the stems a twist, twist, twist and dry them really well with a towel, especially by the stem area. There's lots of water that collects in there. Before the dipping process, I do not refrigerate the apples. All you need to do is let them sit on the counter at room temperature. Next, it is time to insert the wooden candy apple sticks. All I'm doing is taking a mallet and hammering them down into the core. I'll be sure to link these in the description box below. They are the perfect thinness if you want to add decorative straw covers for different creative looks. At this point, you would slide the straw covers directly over the top. Silly me forgot to do this part, so I slid them on after dipping, but it's better to do that before. And again, I like to wipe the the stem area, then the bottom with a paper towel, in case any juice escaped from inserting the sticks. Vamanos! Let's get cooking with this caramel in la cocina. The ingredients that you see here are 4 cans of la lechera, dulce de leche, and heavy cream. I don't suggest any substitutions to ensure you get the exact same results. I've tested several other methods and this one works the absolute best. To the 4 cans of dulce de leche, pour in 3 quarters a cup of heavy cream. And it's so important to cook this on the lowest heating setting that is on your stove, which is simmer. Since this is super thick, it can scorch really fast. 
You want to stir constantly and work the middle and sides by turning it over, scraping the sides and cutting through the center. Doing this effectively will prevent burned bits from getting in your caramel, which you would need to strain out, and nobody wants to strain a sticky caramel mixture. Heavy cream is the key to thinning your dulce de leche without watering it down. The goal is to achieve more of an ideal dipping consistency. It's not there yet if it plops off your wooden spoon like a pudding. That means it's too thick. What you are looking for is a temperature between 140 to 145 degrees. An infrared thermometer allows you to be on point with this and it's okay if it's slightly above 145 just as long as it's not 150 or above. Let's get dipping. You are really going to love dipping in this caramel. As a heads up, it will stay slightly more tacky for about three hours and will be a soft set on the surface, so you don't want to touch the caramel at all. Just place to dry on a flat tray aligned with a sheet of parchment paper. As you can see, the soft caramel coats beautifully with no bubbles or holes, which is why soft caramel, in this case, dulce de leche is king for achieving that flawless finish. To compare results with the craft, it is a chewier caramel. That means it's more likely to create bubbles later on. It's similar to the concept of having on a tight pair of pants then eating a full-blown meal and oops, the button could pop, right? So what's really going on is the gases inside of the apple expand and you are left with those unwanted bubbles and holes on the surface. The softer caramel is more forgiving as the apple expands. So remember, chewy caramel equals more bubbles and dulce de leche equals muy bueno. My other tips and tricks are to angle your pot and give the apple a nice swirl all around, then shake the excess off. Since this caramel is not as runny, once you wipe the bottom, it has a nice clean edge without that foot. And guys, if you are enjoying so far, thank you for stopping by my channel. Make sure you join the party and subscribe to see more of my treat tutorials every time I upload. And hit that bell to get all notifications. Before we add our terrific toppings and chocolate dips, you will want to know about these important instructions to keep your caramel apples at their best. The first time that you lift them from the parchment paper, you should wait about 15 minutes and give them a gentle twist to remove. You didn't do anything wrong, you should expect to see those smudges from the soft caramel on the paper. It looks just like this. And remember to always keep your caramel apples in the fridge to prevent them from drying out and to keep them fresh. But if you are planning on adding toppings and dipping in chocolate, only refrigerate them after you are finished decorating. Another fun skill I'm showing you is how to apply your terrific toppings. The only ones I didn't use were the M&M's. I like toppings to be less bulky and I couldn't find mini pastel M&M's anywhere, only the regular size. These shimmer jimmies were my favorite. I will link them below if you want to give them a try. For the peanuts, I crush them up in a Ziploc bag with a mallet to make them into finer crumbs. Feel free to crush as much as you want. And the same idea for the Oreos. First, I twist the cookies apart to remove the cream from all the sandwiches and dump the cookies inside the food processor without the cream for a clean look. Starting with the peanuts, lightly tap to cover the bottom and turn the apple on its sides to coat the caramel as you rotate. When turning, avoid dragging your apple. Instead, use padding motions and a lighter pressure. Otherwise, it can leave marks and dents in your caramel. I coated my apple halfway to see the shine. You can also coat it entirely as well. Sprinkles are one of the easiest toppings to apply since they are flatter in shape. I like to sprinkle them around the rim with a spoon. You can also use the same technique that we did for the peanuts. I prefer the spoon to achieve an even line around the rim. 
Lately, you guys have been asking how I get my chocolate caramel apple so smooth. So I will demonstrate exactly how I dip them in chocolate for the Oreo and Fruity Pebbles apples. There's something about the layered look that adds a little extra to it with those stripes. My favorite brand of chocolate melt for this is Merkin's. I recommend regular white since I find the super white is more clumpy for some reason. For the first round, I'm microwaving that for 30 seconds and giving it a stir. You will need a lot more chocolate than this if you are planning on using a deep dipping container for the technique. Then continue to microwave in 15 second intervals, stirring in between until it is mostly melted with some remaining chunks. After that, go ahead and mix in your thinning agent of choice. Refined coconut oil works wonders, but as a disclaimer, I advise if you are selling these to check with your customers first that there are no allergies. Other options are Paramount Crystals or Easy Thin. When dipping apples, the idea is for the temperature to be low while still having a fluid consistency. That's where your thinning agent does the job. And the ideal apple dipping temperature for Merkins is 85 degrees to avoid elephant skin. To achieve that striped effect, I use the plunge method to dip the apple straight in while leaving a small ring of caramel peeking out. Then immediately sprinkle on your toppings while the chocolate is still wet. It sets before you know it, so be speedy and have your toppings ready to go. The crushed Oreo went on easily since the crumbs were finely crushed. For the fruity pebbles, the cereal is more chunky, but the whole technique is the same. Dip your apple at 85 degrees in a deep dipping container. Quickly wipe the bottom on the side of the container and sprinkle on a rainbow of fruity pebbles. Since the cereal is larger pieces, I pat with my hand to ensure they are making contact with the apple. And look at that pop of color. Last but not least, for a simple but elegant design, I mixed in some pink color mill oil-based candy coloring with the white merkins and paired that with gold core sanding sugar. My other important tips are never to dip your caramel apples cold or the chocolate can crack. It is ideal to start melting your chocolate right after you finish dipping in the caramel because if the apples sit too long on the counter, they can become cold even at room temperature depending on where you live. I hope you guys enjoyed this caramel apple tutorial and you learned something new. Give this video a thumbs up if you did. This dulce de leche is delicioso and will be something your family or small business customers will rave about. And since they're so easy, you'll constantly be making more awesome apples. It's Christina here. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in the next video.